everyone. My name is Connie and I work with Dr. Leslie McIntosh at the Center for Biomedical Informatics at Washington University in St. Louis. Today we're talking about visualizing operational informatics data using R. The first part of this tutorial is a hands-on exercise on R charts. In preparation for this tutorial, you should have installed packages Shiny, Shiny Dashboard, and DevTools. We will be using DevTools to download the R charts library from GitHub. We tried to provide all of these packages on the flash drive. However, we did not guarantee that all the dependencies for those packages are also on the flash drive. So hopefully you have a good connection and try to use the install packages function in our studio. You can now go to our studio to look at the source code provided for you. We provide a hands-on R charts FT file on the flash drive and hopefully you can see the code on the screen well. The first step is to load the necessary library, which is R charts. Then we read in the data set called ops data. And this is actually a mockup of operational data at CBMI. The next several functions and lines of code prepare the data for visualization. So you can feel free to run all this code which I will do right now. If you would like to take a peek at the data set that we will be plotting, it's PI cumulative growth. The first variable is month, which is the beginning of the month. The second variable is X. It shows the cumulative number of principal investigators that CBMI worked with during that time. And the third variable is date in POSIX format. You need to have POSIX format variable for dates if you would like to plot them in JavaScript time series plots. The first step now is to plot a time series with a single line of code using HiCharts library. You can find the full API for JavaScript HiCharts at this link. HiCharts library probably has the easiest API out of all our charts libraries, and this is why we're using it in this example. Give yourself some space. I will be using this file to write code for this chart. Let's call our chart PI growth plot. The function that we will be using is hplot. And we have to provide some arguments here. So the first argument is the numerical variable that we're plotting. As you saw in the data set, it's called X, and then the date. The date will be displayed on the X axis. That's your POSIX format date variable. Then you provide the data set name. In our case, it's PI cumul growth. The type of this chart is a line chart. This is it. We execute this line of code. This creates the object of the plot you would like to see it, you will need to call this line. Let's zoom in. This is our chart. It doesn't look very attractive because you can see that the POSIX format dates are displayed by as numbers. This is not very helpful to us. We cannot make out what those days are. And also we would like to change maybe the label for the x-axis. So this is our next step. Step two, let's make this chart a little bit more attractive and let's make the daytime format more comprehensible. Going back to our chart, we will add more attributes to it now. We repeat the name of the object and now we're going to call x-axis attribute. On the x-axis, there are several things we want to mention. We want to change the title. The title actually can have more than one attribute. We can change the color of it or the font and the style. That's why we're working with a list. However, in this example, we will only change the text of the title. Let's call it time. The next thing we want to change is the type of our x-axis. 
you want it to be daytime. So if we run this line of code, it will actually alter our original plot object. Now we can run it, zoom in, and you can see clearly what the dates are. The format would be October 2013, which means that it only grabs the month and the year. And this is fine because we're plotting the cumulative number of PIs over time, but the unit of time is actually month. So this is perfect for our example. We can also see that the label for x-axis changed to be time. Well, let's turn our attention to the y-axis now. The x here is not very clear. We would like to change that. Also, our plot starts at not at 0, but at minus 25. That's not very proper. And how about we get rid of these grid lines? They're kind of annoying. We don't need them. We can see the trend clearly, and also we have a tooltip that helps us see the cl clearly the number um, behind the scene. Step three. We decided that we want to change the y-axis label. We want to get rid of the grid lines. We want to start our chart at zero. We can do that by modifying the y-axis variable just like we did for x-axis. So let's repeat PI growth plot and call y-axis. We will title it as number of PIs. Then we also want to start it at zero. That's why you will call min as zero. Next, we will change the grid line color. Unfortunately, you cannot disable the grid lines, but you can make them invisible by making them white or whatever color your background is. So in our case, we just want to turn them white. Let's execute this code. And look at our plot right now. As we zoom in, You can see clearly the number of PIs. You don't see the grid lines anymore. And our chart starts at zero. Great. Now, I personally don't like these markers, these dots on the line. I think they're kind of distracting. So we can turn them off using the plot options attribute. Now, plot options also allows us to work with our line more. We can change its color. We can make it look smoother. Let's try it. Step four. So we decided that our chart looks much better, but we want to get rid of the dots. And we can also change the color of the line. Let's do that now. Coming back to our plot object, I want to call it again. This time, we will use plot options. Because we are modifying a line chart, we start by typing line, and then we have a list of attributes we can change for that line. First, we can change its color. For instance, for instance, we can use this color. We now want to address our marker. So marker also has more than one attribute. So we start with a list, and then there is an attribute called enabled which we will make false. This should be it. Run this code. And now we have a different chart. Well, the same chart, but with a different color. The chart, the line is now green. And we don't have those annoying markers anymore. Great. Now we can enhance this a little bit more. Let's say your unit of data is not month, as in our case, it's instead a day. So you want your tooltips to be a little bit more precise. Step four. 
what if we want to display the exact day, and not just a month in the tooltip? You can look up some more daytime options on this link. However, we will um, provide you with the following example. Let's go back to our chart. There is an attribute in high charts which is called tooltip. Let's call it right now. In the tooltip, there is an option to change date, time, label formats. Here there's a few things we can change. However, just follow my lead on this one. We will start with month and we actually will list our format right here. So capital A stands for the day of the week, if you are interested in showing that. And then lowercase b is the month. Lowercase e is the day of the month. And then uppercase y would stand for the full year. So this way, we can see the exact date in our tooltip. Let's run this code. If we zoom in right now, you can see exactly what date is. For instance, Sunday, December 1st, 2013. This will be very helpful. Now let's say you would like to add some more features to your chart. For instance, we can add zooming feature. If you have a lot of data points and it gets very crowded on your chart, you would potentially want to zoom in on a certain period of time. It's, it's very good for time series charts. So how would we do that? Also, let's change the height of the chart to show you that functionality. Going back to our code, we will call our PI growth plot again. Now, this time we will work with the chart attribute. On the chart attribute, we will say zoom type. There are three types of zooming enabled for our high charts. One across the x-axis, one across the y-axis, and also zooming across both x and y axes. For instance, you could use the latter one on scatter plots. However, in our example, it is enough to just zoom in on the x-axis so we can look at a certain period of time closer. So let's specify x. And then height of the chart would be, let's say, 300 pixels. Let's run this code. We can see that our chart actually got a little bit smaller. But now, if you click on a certain period, let's say January 1st, 2013, and drag it over to September 2013, you can zoom in on that area. To go back, you can just reset the zoom. This was the end of our demonstration. You can now try to build a chart on your own. We provide you with code to manipulate the data a little bit more. So your goal would be to build a column chart with the first seven rows of data in top products data set. You're asked to provide a clear title to the chart and its axes. Use category for x-axis type and then make the grid lines white so that we don't see them. You can also change the height to be 300 pixels. If you would like to add more features, please feel free to use the demonstration example. Please take five minutes to try this example. Let's review the results. Now, I actually prepared the code ahead of time, obviously. So let's walk through it to see if you have the same. I called the chart most popular product. And then I start with hplot function. I plot projects, which is the numerical variable and then across applications. The type of this chart is column. We specify the data set, which is top products. I call this chart most popular product. Then I'm modifying the x-axis. I'm telling it to be type category with title application. I'm also changing the title y-axis to be number of projects. And the grid line color is white so that we don't see it. 
Now for our chart attribute, we're changing height to be 300 pixels. So before we call this code, let me execute the data manipulation first. And then let's create the chart. We'll zoom in. And this is what you should have as well. As you can see, Comportal seems to be the most popular product if we count number of projects in each of these applications. So hopefully we have the same result, but let's make it a little bit more advanced. How about we change the tooltip to not say Series 1, which is what it's going to do by default. Let's enhance the chart by adding a more clear tooltip. Going back to our chart, we will need to modify our most popular product. We add the tooltip. There is an option to add formatter, so bear with me and just follow the code. What we are writing here is actually a little bit of JavaScript, which you don't need to understand exactly what it's doing, but this will serve as an example of what's possible. We're writing a function which will return yx is data point plus some text. This is it. Hopefully this works for you. Let's reload our chart. And if you zoom in, you should now see 345 projects for Comportal. It's a little bit clearer, and you don't see that series one, which doesn't make much sense in our case. So this is it for this tutorial. Thank you so much for your attention, and I will see you later in the tutorial for Shiny Dashboard.